Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Chris with Remax Elite and the Property SWAT team. And today we're starting off with uh, our new introduction here with Michael Pratt with Precision Cut Painting. And we'll welcome you to our Neighborhood Pro Session. Welcome, Mike. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for coming along. And again, um, just to reiterate, Precision Cut Painting is your business, right? That's correct. Well, thanks for joining us today. So the first question we had, obviously, was tell us a little bit about you and what you do and why. Okay. Well, my name is Mike Pratt of Precision Cut Painting. Uh, I've been painting since 1996. And the reason why I got into this career is because I thoroughly enjoy it. Okay. okay. So you like painting in general? You I do. Painting. I do. I, I, I like going into a client's space mm. and seeing, okay, some colors need to be changed, brightening up, some damaged walls. And I just love going in there and making it like brand new. Mm -hmm. Depending on what color the client chooses, that's totally up to them. Right. So, yeah. Uh, I started back, uh, uh, like I said, 1996. I do residential and commercial. Okay. Uh, probably I would say 70% is residential. 30% is residential. I do a lot of residential work at the International Airport. Okay. So commercial, I mean. So 70% residential. Yes. 30% 30 commercial. Commercial. That's okay. correct. Good. So uh, the International Airport's a big client of mine, right. and I have done some restaurants. I just finished uh, doing seven brew houses. Wow. Which seven is brew houses? Seven brew houses. Okay. Uh, they were during, during the lockdown, so it worked out well for me. And Oh, yeah. And Not painting around people eating. No. Well, <laughs> the time frame, I could be there any time of the yeah. day and, and just power on through the, through the restaurant. So that was quite gotcha. an experience. Okay. Uh, I did go to trade school, so I'm a red sealed uh, journeyman painter. So I can work. So there's actually a certification for painting. There is. A lot of people say you go to school for painting. Yeah. I'm like, yes. There was actually a lot. When I got into trade school, mm -hmm. uh, I was amazed at what to be learned. Right. And I was. I mean, I was really impressed with it. And it was an awesome course. It was three years. Mm -hmm. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay. So it gives me three a background years. to to apply my talents to to the right. specific problems that I have with clients. Right. So, right. So that's your. So how did you get into painting then? So it was strange. I worked at the municipal airport, and we started. I got introduced to line painting. Line painting is basically uh, like parking lot painting. Um, okay. Uh, we got into airfields, so did all the runways, taxiways, uh, mm -hmm. uh, did helicopter pads, the Indy car races, like I was talking to you earlier. Right. And I even did a basketball court. A basketball for, court for for small school, so that was <laughs> okay. that was a bit challenging, but I okay. figured it out pretty quick, and it was <laughs> yeah. it was really cool. From there, it just inspired on to me to start my own business while I was still working at the airport. Okay. I started part time and back in nineteen uh, two thousand seven, okay. and then strictly went to full time in two thousand sixteen. Okay, and just took the, just went with it, and yeah. I never looked back. I wish I would have done it sooner, mm -hmm. but I thoroughly enjoyed it. That's awesome. And so, of course, for everybody else, I've worked with Mike, but also we have uh, met through networking and uh, through a group that we were going to. And obviously, networking all the time is easy for us, but uh, in a real face to face environment, but a little mm -hmm. bit more challenging today where everybody's doing Zoom calls. So, of course, this was kind of the connection. It's been a couple of years now we've known each other. Yes, it has been. Okay, yeah. good. So, then, um, next question we have here. So, share with us today some examples of why someone should choose you when they need a professional painter. I think the biggest thing when choosing a client, obviously price is a, an important factor, but it's mm -hmm. the skill set and the knowledge of what you do. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of people that say, yeah, I can paint. Yeah. And I go into some of the homes and I've seen that and no, they can't. And you can tell right away how they hold okay. a brush or how they prep things. Okay. Um, so that's important. Um, mm -hmm. I upfront with the client saying there's just something that comes up that I've never done before. Mm -hmm. I'm upfront with them and saying, hey, I've never done this, but I do have someone that I can rely on. Okay. I have sub trades that, that I can rely on and helping me okay. out. Okay. Um, the biggest thing is reliability. Right. A client wants reliability. If I'm going to say I'm going to be there, I will be there. Mm. Sometimes through sickness or something has come up, mm -hmm. The client only needs to know, say, hey, I'm not going to be there today. Yeah. So I'm very forthright with my clients. Right. Um, Before you're supposed to be there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, time frame, I let them know what time frame it is. If I'm working in a house that um, they're obviously living in, mm -hmm. uh, I'm very methodical in strategy, telling them this is what we're going to do today or what they want to do today. And then I kind of work with them, not rip their whole house apart and have them going to be in there for two weeks. Right. I say we'll work on these certain areas today and then we'll work, continue on okay. from there. Okay. And it's my passion what I do. I love what the industry has for me. And mm -hmm. it, it brings great joy to me when I have clients that 
Okay. Or we're satisfied with the results. Right, right. Now, you mentioned something interesting that I've come across. Um, you say, you know, you can tell when someone's a good professional painter when they're like holding the brush a certain way or True. the way they're prepping. Mm -hmm. What my brain just said was, that's great. Once I've hired them, I can tell that. What would I do if I haven't hired them yet and be able to do that? I have a list of referrals if they do want to rely on that. Okay. And, okay. and just from the experience of me doing the walk around before I give okay. them an estimate, yeah. I'm very forthright on telling them saying, hey, this is what you need in this area. Okay. So I'm kind of giving them some information that I am experienced. Right. So I'm as not... you're giving the walkthrough, you can kind of say how you would attack the project. So exactly. I give it a good example yeah. is bathrooms. Mm -hmm. um, the first question I'll ask is um, for half baths is not an issue, but for bathrooms with showers, mm -hmm. I automatically tell them that there's a special kind of paint that I use in there. Right. For meal to and, 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 uh, and you know, Water stain, yeah. water stain damage and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. So it kind of gives them the, the experience that say, hey, I know what I'm talking about. This yeah. is how I'm going to do it for you. Gotcha. So it's long lasting. Okay. Good, good. Well, I think that's pretty good understanding. Just, you know, I guess it comes down to when you're talking to someone who's a contractor, a tradesperson is ask a lot of questions before you hire them. I think is what I'm hearing is the primary thing. Mm -hmm. If someone knows how to answer the question, clearly they've tackled the job before. Yeah. Uh, if someone's not really sure other than I'm just going to paint the wall, I guess maybe that's, you know, a limiting factor is maybe not enough detail. Yeah. One so, thing I have to put in there too, if you don't mind, Chris, mm -hmm. is uh, I also tell my clients up front, I'm WCB insured and I am have liability insurance Excellent. up to five million dollars okay that's so, interesting to hear tell me an example not that hopefully you've never had to use it but tell me an example why that would matter um the insurance buys probably in a house not so much if if i had a spill of paint it only had to happen once to me and it happened to be on a hardwood floor okay it was easy to clean out but if i spill a large amount of paint on the carpet Mm, okay. Good chances the carpet might have to be replaced. My insurance would cover that. Right. Or the extreme. I can't imagine trying to get paint out of a carpet floor. <laughs> yeah, but but the the extreme thing is be if say for instance uh, I'm painting in someone's house who's of Chinese descent and they have mm -hmm. a uh, a six thousand year old vase that I happen to knock over. I mean I'm covered for that. Right. So you're basically saying for articles in the home if there's yes. damage or breakage. Yes. Then exactly. that covers you as well. Um, okay. A lot of other trades have it for more like flooding and fire. I, I, I all my products are non flammable. Non flammable. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, I never even thought that. about that side of it. So. Yeah, so I mean, okay. I could never really cause a house fire. Mm -hmm. uh, electrician says, oh, that could possibly happen that, but okay. that's the kind of insurance that I have. I had to have the insurance gotcha. working commercially at the airport as well. Okay, so I, I can understand, you know, people maybe in a commercial environment that would make sense, but to hear about the residential scenarios, um, like spilling paint on carpet, I would have never thought about that, but yeah. of course, how would you have backed that up? True. And the WC <laughs> aspect is if I happen to fall off a ladder, which I'm very careful with, mm -hmm. um, I cannot sue the homeowner. The homeowner is at ease. A lot okay. of people, when they hire contractors, they yeah. should have asked that question. Okay. That they have these requirements. Okay. It's That's very important. Good. Okay. Thank you for that. It's, it's funny how, you know, how many times I've painted myself or even hired you um, and or done a big job like that with builders. Um, I guess you don't really think about the, if something goes wrong, who's responsible for it because it's just exactly. painting. In my head, it's just painting. Right. Yeah. So good. Okay. Next one we have. So what's a range of jobs that you like to provide? So kind of like the smallest job to the largest job, obviously commercial you do. So, so people aren't like calling you like I need to patch a hole in a wall from a paint. Yeah. Yeah, unless that's something you would offer. Um, all jobs are good regardless of big or small because okay. even the small jobs and I have done small jobs mm -hmm. have lead to referrals to bigger jobs. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just to give an example is I had a, a customer that had a small job, which led into four other referrals. No. Oh. So uh, I do big jobs as well. Mm -hmm. um, currently, I'm just waiting for the okay of a very large home. Okay. Uh, if it is, uh, I have also have subs that can help me out as well. So it's just I'm not a one man show. I have okay. people that can help me with these bigger projects. Right. But I love them all. Yeah. Um, the only one that I kind of shy away from is is large exteriors. Exteriors. Exteriors, okay. uh, because okay. I do have a lot of clients. Okay. And the time frame, if you get a large, a large exterior put into it, mm -hmm. and with typical Edmonton summers, <laughs> and weather, it could rain. <laughs> it can rain a lot, and they can really throw the curtain. Now, I do smaller yeah. exteriors, but not bigger exteriors. Okay. So you bring up a good point, then. So obviously, having access to sub trades and people that you trust to work. Yes. Um, I guess that would allude to just saying, okay, you're not going to get overbooked because you have resources to kind of that's correct. Fill yeah. in if you can. What's a situation that you prefer? not to do exteriors um, I'm sure you have somebody then who loves to do exteriors would that be accurate yes okay. I, do. I do have some people that I can refer them to then excellent to do the excellent. larger exteriors 
Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, now I have a, a couple other questions here, but one of the, the common questions that people ask me is, should I paint or stain my fence? I know that you don't like to do a lot of exterior stuff, but that's one question that I get all the time. Should I paint it or stain it? What do you think in that? Depending situation? on what look that they want. Okay. Uh, depending on what kind of wood is on the on the fence. Okay. Uh, if it's uh, a cedar fence, mm -hmm. it's shameful that it would put solid paint on it. Because it's beautiful looking. Yeah, yes, you, okay. but you do want to put a certain stain on it to protect it because over time cedar will, will age and look gray and look old. It grays out. Yeah, yeah. It does. See that with cedar shingles and stuff too. Yes, I do. Yeah, exactly. So you want to preserve that kind of wood. Um, okay. Fences, uh, yes, uh, there's certain amounts of stains you can use that are solid stains. Okay. That, that are look, come on as look as like paint. Oh, okay. Um, and decks as well. I do decks as well. Mm-hmm. And I give a lot of caution to people who do decks because okay. people do decks in, in kind of a wrong way. Oh, and it's okay. important that you do it the right way because if okay. you don't, your efforts are going to be ending in disaster. Gotcha. And just really tidbit, the wrong way being like the way they apply it or the way that the product they use, what would you say just as the a tidbit? Prep work, first of all. Prep work. Prep work, okay. first of all. Most people will go and think, well, I got a power wash. Mm -hmm. That's great. You can do that. Mm -hmm. And then the next day they, they apply the stain. Mm -hmm. That's a mistake right there. You oh, have to let okay. the wood dry out. Let it be dry. Dry out. And okay. then because you, you need a 15, 12 to 15 percent um, uh, content in the wood for, for it to be proper. If it's too wet, okay. you paint one here. Sanding is all. And then the time of the day, never paint or stain a fence or, or a deck mm -hmm. uh, in the heat of the day. Always do it in the shade or do it on a cloudy day. Okay. With 24 hours of no rain in the forecast. And okay. you get a best adhesion. So that's interesting because uh, in that scenario, I'm thinking, okay, don't paint when it's wet. Don't paint when it's raining, but I'll get better application if I paint when it's possibly looking like it might rain or might be cloudy. So that's a bit of a dance. It, it is a bit of a dance. It is tricky to yeah. do decks. Um, okay. I always tell people do it in the evening where the, the sun's not shining on it or the, the sun is low. Right. Um, the problem, so in the evening, I guess. Yeah. yeah. The okay. problem with, with painting a deck Mm -hmm. uh, in the heat of the day, and you got a bunch of buddies over and you're drinking beers and you're doing that, mm -hmm. is that the stain or the paint mm -hmm. dries too fast. And with it being waterborne, the, mm -hmm. the water gets caught up between the substrate, which is the deck at the surface, and the layer okay. of the drying paint, okay. and you get bubbles. Ah, Once you get bubbles, okay. it's okay. game over. You got to redo it. You got to redo the whole yeah. thing. So okay. it, you got to wait for the drying time. It needs to dry on its own, not dry okay. too fast. Okay. Well, that's a bit of a specific project, but thank you for yeah. sharing. You're welcome. I just, love. It came out of my uh, thought process here that it's funny how we're getting into that spring season now. True. Where a lot of people are asking about fencing and decks yeah. and paint versus stain. So yeah, yeah Okay, so for general area that you like to take jobs. So yes. basically, if we say like as in real estate, I'll say, okay, if it's within, um, in like in Alberta terms, if it's a one hour drive from downtown, I'll yep. do it. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. So basically like downtown core and out is usually for me a drive time. Right, right. I've done extensively, and the, the farthest one I've done was in Tasmania, Australia. Well, wow, that's a little it's bit like, of whoa. a <laughs> very special client. It was, <laughs> it was a unique opportunity, and I just couldn't say no to it. So, okay, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so we're getting to the end here, but um, as we're trying to build with connections with people, tell us about a positive experience that you've had with a recent client. Most of my experiences with most of my clients are very, very positive. Mm -hmm. um, the joy that I get from a client is the face on their, the look on their face that they say, hey, this looks awesome. Mm -hmm. And I would say probably about 60% of the time, they actually give me gifts. A gift certificate. No or, kidding. Uh, okay. We'd be talking about beers. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I had one client, he was... Uh, he uh, had rum that he they would drink rum, but he gave me a bottle of rum from from Cuba. Right. But just not just those gifts, but just the personal interaction with the client and seeing that they're very very happy with it. Right. Can, you know, doing the flip side where you work for an employer, mm -hmm. um, it's just okay, great, you did that job. The next here's the next one. Right. You don't get that satisfaction. To me, that's huge. Yeah. The interaction with the client and the positive. Mm -hmm. from the client mm -hmm. and I would say about 99% of the time that I get that right there's the odd client that's uh, mm -hmm. just I try my best but I can't help them if they're extremely OCD <laughs> right right well I mean we all have those uh, particular traits you know something we're looking for sure. so I guess just exactly. communicating the expectations beforehand is yeah. at least to gauge whether or not you can work together for sure so okay well I'm sure we have lots more we can talk about but the last question I have on my list specifically um, is just 
thanking you for coming and joining us. And before we're finished the interview today, um, what is something you would really like to emphasize to our viewers about you, your uh, type of jobs that you do, or anything that we talked about today that you just think is really make sure that this is clear in the video today? Ah, that's a tough one. I mean, it's it's wide range, but I mean, I offer the best services I have from the experience that I have, mm -hmm. and I enjoy what I do. That's very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't sit there and watch paint dry, mind you, but I mean, <laughs> uh, I offer the best I can for the client and I give them best security. And I, I think my pricing is is reasonable. Mm -hmm. It's not low, okay, but it's not high either. Right, right. And I'm very, very uh, time committed for right. my clients. Okay. So I make sure that I, because I'm in being mm -hmm. a bit of ace of in their home, I'm become part of their family type of thing. Yeah. And I think it's important that uh, I, I work with them very well mm -hmm. and, and make sure that they're satisfied with the product at the end. Okay, that's good. Well, you make a good point. So being that this is a video connection and trying to get you to be introduced to everybody, um, when we post this, just ask people if you have questions for Mike. Um, obviously, you can post them in the video comments and we'd be happy to make sure Mike gets those questions and we can put you in touch. Um, but I think one of the things that does come up a lot, being in real estate, lots of people want to say, where can I spend my money to get my house ready for sale? Or where where should I spend my money and paint? Should I be painting ceilings? Should I be painting walls? Um, and one of the things, aside from that, and I'll give you a sec to answer that, is how long should I expect for my preparation time if I want to get my house ready or my condo apartment ready? What should I expect for time frame to book you and possibly paint my job? Um, in terms of like, is it one day, two days, five days? What's a couple of examples maybe you can say for residential? Well, one example I just did for a client. Um, I met them earlier last year and they wanted to basically paint their whole house to get it for resale. Okay. So I walked around with the client and I says, mm -hmm. you don't need to paint your whole house. Yeah. No, there's certain walls you need to take care of. Yes. Okay. And they were quite impressed. Okay. They'd figure I'd come in and want to make money off. I said, no, right, I mean, right. I'm very upfront with the clients and saying, if it's not broke, why fix it? Right. It's the same thing like ceilings. A lot of people want to paint ceilings. Mm -hmm. If the ceilings are, are really good, and then that, why, why fix it? Mm -hmm. um, time frame wise, um, I really work well with the client. Sometimes if with multiple clients that I have, mm -hmm. I try to juggle things around a bit and just I'll make it work. Right. But prep time, depending on what it, the size of the home is. If it's, uh, I did one home just just recently for a client. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to be in there for two days, and it'd be in one day. Oh. I, was, I was in and out, and it was fine. Okay. Wow. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And the reason that I talked about the the ceiling painting and things mm -hmm. like that is a lot of the time when I'm viewing a home, I can tell like the paint maybe was just done two years ago, and there's marks throughout the home. So maybe just touch a little bit about if you're going to go in, obviously if the place is a mess, it requires drywall patching, it requires some True. repairs. Um, do you do those kinds of things as well or just applying the color and cleaning and prep? Oh work? no, I do, do all, say for prep? I do all major uh, drywall repairs. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes. Um, not extensive work to a fact if I come into a home and it's just been boarded. Right. Uh, I'm not a taper and mutter. I have a, I actually have a sub trade that I relay that to okay. him Great. and he's very good. He's also a ceiling specialist. So I do a lot of referring work to him for uh, the client has a, um, say a flat ceiling or they want to do a California knockdown or they mm -hmm. want to remove popcorn. Mm -hmm. uh, I refer him because that's his, that's his, that's his trade. Perfect. Yeah. Um, but marks on the walls. Uh, I mean, if there's a wall with a small couple of I, I refer to client. If you can clean it off with a magic eraser, okay, you just save yourself some money for me not painting that wall. Right, right. But I've gone into homes where that were 30, 40 years old and be hard pressed to find any little nicks. Right. Uh, I've been in houses that are three years old and it looks like Swiss cheese. <laughs> yeah. So I spend more Imagine. time just doing the prep work in it. Right. But I do all drywall repairs. Okay. And stuff like that. I do have a list of trades, for instance, um, baseboards that get wet and they swell. Okay. They need to be replaced. Okay. Uh, I have people that can do that. Okay. So even if someone has a bathroom they're doing, yes. a couple pieces of baseboards have been swelled up, shower leaking, or sure. just the edge. That's actually a good point. Sometimes would you sometimes recommend, you know, as a realtor, Try to say, you know, should you replace that because it's bad? Or if it's small enough, would you consider just painting over it and cleaning it up a little yeah. bit? You know, obviously your professional expertise would be... The judgment would be on that. I mean, if it's okay. if it's just a little bit of water damage, I can scrape it down a bit, fix mm -hmm. it up, make mm -hmm. sure it looks... I mean, if it's swollen up three times the size and it's pulling away from the wall, <laughs> yeah. then you probably need to Might replace it. Pull that, piece yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. But uh, Well, that's great, Mike, and really appreciate it. And relating it, of course, to real estate because sometimes... 
we're in a situation where we're helping people understand what little things they can do or large projects they can do to make their home worth more. One of the elements we haven't talked about yet, but just really briefly to help you share, is sometimes I go into someone's home and they're saying, we just, the home is overwhelming for us. We would like to buy a new home because this home is just too much work. Mm -hmm. And in actual consultation process, we find out they don't really want to move. Mm -hmm. They just see it's an overwhelming amount of work and they don't have the ability to, or time to do it. So one of the things that's come up in the past is, you know, can I just get you in there and help freshen up their home? Because in today's day and age, sometimes just making your home more enjoyable is a better result and less hectic in the big picture for sure than trying to actually move locations yeah so um would you say that you know from obviously i'm not the only real estate agent you work with but just in terms of jobs um how much would you say maybe you paint people's house just to kind of freshen it up and and make it enjoyable again quite a few times actually yeah it'd be surprising how people just want that change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh i mean i've gone into people some just went and did a client last night uh, they want a couple rooms done they're not planning on moving or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And they said, yeah, we want to change the color. And it's just amazing. People have been in their homes. And right now, with them all working at home, they're staring mm -hmm. at their walls. And they're realizing yeah. something's got to be done with that. Right. So, And more commonly, actually, I've seen all these homes now with these big 20-foot ceilings. Another, yes. now, a lot of people contact me and say, how do I do that, Chris? And my yeah. first question is, why would you want to try? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that's obviously something somebody should be calling upon someone like Exactly, this. exactly. But I do a lot of a lot of referrals from a lot of clients from that deal with real estate as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's amazing because through your industry, you obviously know that mm -hmm. people walk into a home and if they see bad color, they, they get turned off. They yeah. don't really look at the, the, the blueprint of the home, the flow. Mm -hmm. um, Painting's probably the least of their concerns. Right. But people get really get turned off. And I've actually gone into quite a few homes mm -hmm. and changed it around mm -hmm. and that help that house is actually sold probably within a short period of time afterwards. Right. Just from a paint job. Just from a paint job. Cleaning it up and you know, a exactly. lot of flippers, you know, work with a lot of people who like to do the flipping, mm -hmm. buying houses, renovating them, reconditioning them, and then selling them again. Exactly. Um, and it's interesting how one of the key factors going into an old home that has old, tired you know, stained paint colors. And it's interesting how much, so much of the renovation is actually just changing the color. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or sprucing it up so it doesn't look like it's old stained paint. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's great. I, I like going into a home that, it's like the guy that owns the glass business. God mm -hmm. bless little boys with slingshots. Uh, I love people, <laughs> I love people who had bad color choices. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, 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 it's rewarding. It's mm -hmm. really to go into a space and thinking to freshen it up and, yeah. For the people that are going to live there, mm -hmm. they're happy. For the people who are going to sell, it just it just helps a little bit better. Absolutely. Well, again, I'll just say thank you for coming, Mike. It's appreciate you. Uh, having you come in here and join us, but also it's good to see you again. Yeah. Talk about some fun stuff. So thank you, everybody, for joining us on this version of Neighborhood Pro.